They are Australia's tallest poppies, heroes in their own right. But what are the real stories behind our heroes? Tonight, a great Australian, Ryan Fitzy Fitzgerald, gets behind another great Australian, Greg Norman. Golfer, choker, and avid nudist, the shark. This is Tall Poppies. Hi, I'm Fitzy, and I'm here to talk about Greg Norman, Australia's greatest and nudist golfer. He had 20 PGA Tour wins. He did a massive nude photo shoot for ESPN magazine. He also posted this nude photo to his Instagram account. But what history has forgotten is that the shark was always in the nut. Let's just say Greg Norman, he loves to swing his wood. And he's also quite good at golf. It's hard to fully comprehend how big he was in the 80s. But for all his success, he's also known as sport's biggest choker. But that reputation is completely unwarranted. And for the first time on Australian television, I'm going to reveal the untold story of why. Greg Norman burst onto the international golf scene back in the 80s. This kid from Mount Isa, Queensland, suddenly started winning all these tournaments. And everyone is saying, who is this blonde-haired Australian bloke who gets around Starkers? They call him the Great White Shark. Why is that? Because he loves to show off his white pointer. But Greg didn't care. He's like, mate, Clothes restrict my swing, and he was not wrong. Nudity wasn't just a gimmick, it was actually the secret to Greg's success. He'd put the other players off their shots. They'd be about to tee off. He'd get right in their eye line, doing some deep stretching. Like, I mean, really releasing the hammies. It was gross. He'd be squatting down in front of the other golfers going, remember to line up the hole. Don't crack under pressure. You take your putt, I'll just be over here cleaning my balls. OK, now visualise the pendulous swinging motion while I polish my club head. That was probably... That was too far, wasn't it? Yeah. But it worked. He'd be able to compete for the ultimate prize in golf, the elusive US Masters at Augusta. He was six shots ahead and he was walking towards the first tee on the final day's play. Then his caddy pipes up. Oh, you can't lose it from here, Greg. The green jacket is yours. The green what? The green jacket. If you win at Augusta, you get to wear the green jacket. Greg started freaking out. You know I don't wear clothes. Yeah, I've noticed, but it's a hallowed Augusta tradition. Just like the other two important traditions, no women or black people can be members. Greg Norman was torn. He's about to fulfil his dream. It's everything that he worked for but you know what? He doesn't do clothes. And he knows what he has to do. He turned to his caddy and he said, hand me my shanking wedge. So Greg lines up his first shot. Shank. <coughs> then his next shot. Shank. 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 <coughs> Some people say eight spectators were lost that afternoon. <laughs> Australia still think that Greg Norman choked on that fateful day, but in fact, he bravely played the worst golf of his life so he could stay true to his principles of always being in the nud. Greg went on to lose this way all the time, managing to stay at the top of the golf rankings for 331 weeks despite heroically shanking his way out of contention if there was any risk at all of him winning a jacket. In his post-golf career, he's even started a string of successful businesses. And you know what? He's managed to stay stark as the whole time. There are Greg Norman wines, sunglasses, Greg Norman real estate, wakeboarding complexes, even Greg Norman beef products. And he could have never done any of it if he had worn clothes. Amazing. Oh, what a story. Is that cut? We're done? Great, thanks, guys.